Hello everyone, welcome back to this lesson. This is going to be the second video of our four part lesson in section 1.2 of AP Calculus. So let's go ahead and get started about when substitution may not work. So we're going to use the substitution method that we learned about in the last video in these problems here. And let's just see what happens. So if I substitute here in the first one, um, I'm substituting in negative three and okay, so I'm going to have negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 plus 3 over negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 minus 3. All right, so let's see what happens here. Um, 9 minus 12 plus 3, that gets me 0. And 9 minus 6 minus 3 also gets me zero. So zero over zero, that is um, undefined. It's actually indeterminate, okay? So now here I'm looking at it from one from the left and one from the right. So since I'm doing the same thing, um, I'm just going to substitute in one once. I'm not gonna do it double the work. So let's go here. One squared plus four times one plus three. One squared plus two times one minus three. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so one plus four plus three, that gets me eight. And then one squared is one, uh, plus two is three, minus three, that is zero. And so here, this is going to be undefined. So obviously we're already running into an issue. So what can we do here? So here's that same function, but let's take a look at it again. So as x approaches negative three, so here's negative three, and from both direction, it approaches the same value. And so the whole, it says the whole of that coordinate is going to be one half. So we know that it's one half. So there has to be a way that we can actually figure that out analytically. Let's look at it from one from the left side. So it keeps going down, so that's gonna be negative infinity. And then one from the right side, we're going up. So that's gonna be positive infinity. So now the task is to determine how to find these limits analytically. So how can we find those discontinu the discontinuities of a rational function when we are in pre-calculus? So there were a few specific steps that we had to do. I want you guys to write out those steps that we had. So first, we had to factor the numerator and denominator. Okay. So after we factored the numerator and the denominator, we wanted to divide out any factors that we're actually able to divide out that were the same in the numerator and in the denominator. Um, and that would also tell us that there's a removable discontinuity when those factors would equal zero. Okay, so let's write that out. So where the factors equal zero. And then finally, then if the factors did not divide out, then what was remaining in the denominator, wherever that those X values would come out to be zero is where we would have an infinite discontinuity. So let's write that out. It would have an infinite discontinuity at those points. So let's actually perform this cancellation process. We're going to start by factoring the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to say, okay, this is equal to the limit as X approaches negative three. And then we're gonna take the factors of both the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, I have X plus one and X plus three. And in the denominator, I have x plus three and x minus one. Okay, so notice here that we have the x plus threes, those are going to be the same. So those are going to divide out right there. Okay, and let's see what we have left over. So what we can say here is now we have the limit as x approaches negative three of x plus one over x minus one left over. 
So now let's try our substitution method at negative three. So now we'll get negative three plus one over negative three minus one. And let's see, I get negative two over negative four, which simplifies to be one half. So before, if you substitute in just negative three there, you wouldn't be able to get that factor. You would end up with what is known as an indeterminate form, zero over zero. But in this case, we got negative, um, we were able to divide out some of those factors and we were able to substitute in later and we realized, okay, analytically it is one half. So this is how we can do that same process that we got in that graph above. So a couple of notes here. Based on our knowledge from pre-calculus, we know that if a rational function has a non-removable infinite discontinuity, then what's happening there graphically? So graphically, a vertical asymptote is, exists. And then going along with that, since the y values do not approach one specific value from both sides at a vertical asymptote, then the limit does not exist. However, there is something we can do. We can determine if the one-sided limits approaches negative infinity or positive infinity. In order to do this analytically, we're going to kind of marry the numerical and the graphical and the algebraic approaches that we've discovered so far. So for each of these limits below, we're going to determine the sign of the simplified function at the value to the right or the left of x equal to one. So just note that the function that we got just a moment ago on the other page is the same one that we simplified to be x plus one over x minus one. So a value to the left of one will use this, okay, 0.9. So let's substitute that in. So 0.9 plus one over 0.9 minus one. And let's just look at this. All right, what is 0.9 plus one? Well, that's 1.9, that's a positive value. And then, okay, what is 0.9 minus one? Well, we're gonna end up with a negative value right there, negative 0.1, so negative. So let's look at this. When we have a positive over a negative, we end up with a negative value. So what that's going to tell us is that we have negative infinity. So the limit of f of x, as x approaches one from the left side, comes out to be negative infinity. So we are able to say what exactly happens at that vertical asymptote in this case. Now on the other side, on the right side, we're gonna use 1.1, because 1 1.1 1 .1 is to the right of one. So we'll substitute that in, 1.1 1 .1 plus one for 1 1.1 minus one. And we're just gonna, again, look at the signs. So in the numerator, I have uh, 2.1, which is positive. And in the denominator, I have positive 0.1. So that's gonna get me a positive infinity, positive infinity in this case. So the limit of f of x as x approaches one from the right side is going to be positive infinity. So now we're able to say, okay, on the left side is going down, but on the right side is going up. So flip your page over so that you can actually see the graph that, okay, on the left side it went down, and then on the right side it went up, and this is how we can do that analysis algebraically. So in some cases, when you have some radicals involved, rationalization is going to be the tool that you're going to want to use to help solve the problem. So let's rationalize this function. So we're gonna multiply this by the square root of x plus one plus two over the square root of x plus one plus two. So we're just multiplying by one and we're using the conjugate of the radical in the numerator. So let's see what happens here. So we have the limit as x approaches three. Um, all right, so when I, when I multiply this out, when I FOIL this out, um, when you multiply by a conjugate, the outside and the inside actually cancel out. So here I'm gonna have square roots are going to disappear. So I have x plus one and negative two times two is going to be minus four. And I'm not going to waste any time multiplying in my denominator right now. So I'm just gonna have x minus three and still square root x plus one plus two. All right, so now let's, let's look at this. Um, in my numerator, I will get, well, one minus four, that gets me minus three. Well now just take a look at that. 
I have the same factor in my numerator as I do in my denominator, x minus three there and x minus three right there. So if I simplify this, I will end up with the limit of, or the limit as x approaches three of one over the square root of x plus one plus two. Now let's try our substitution. So one over square root of three plus one plus two. Well, uh, three plus one is four. Square root of four is going to be two. So in my denominator, I have two plus two, which is going to get me four. So one over four. And what we can see here is that I'm looking for this right here, that hole that's happening. And yeah, that looks to be about 0.25 or one fourth. Now visually, um, we can make that guess, but we can confirm it now algebraically. These are going to be some of the tools that you're going to be using um, in the coming months, in the coming year, as you continue to pursue more and more deeper calculus especially with limits, these are going to be essential skills. These algebraic skills are going to be very essential as you're going to see in the coming lessons. So definitely rewatch some of these examples if you need to. And if you want more examples of some of these specific contents, please come to me specifically. I look forward to hearing from you guys. If you need any help, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help.